you can start from instead of starting from like a true day one you can start from the end of spring the summer workouts we had so you can jump into stuff a little much faster you can build much faster and give more detail when you don't have to teach new people new stuff right away so it's been huge it's been a really big help that was the shortest answer like ever <laughs> What makes up a good characteristics of a, a good backup quarterback? Um, the ability to be ready to go at any time. Be ready, like, that's what I think was, ex like when Colt jumped in there as number three at that time, then again number two, being able to jump, being prepared, preparation number one, being able to get mental reps. I think it's the hardest thing for a kid, for most people, is to not, is to get reps and you're actually not doing it. And I think that's really hard. And we talk about, like, I use a, kind of a unique philosophy, like, if you watch a play 10 times on film, you gotta kind of trick yourself to realize you just ran that play 10 times. Even though you didn't run it, you got the what you needed out of it. So the biggest thing is a film study and being able to watch, but I think we call it functional intelligence. All the kids pick up information differently. The amount of time they pick up fast. Some guys are slow, some guys are fast. So you gotta figure out which one, they're, how they are, and kind of work that teaching towards that. I mean, I think my teaching background helps. Being a math teacher, you know, not everybody loves mathematics and all so on. So being a high school math teacher, being able to find different ways that kids can learn, and in this case, young men can learn and pick things up. In our case, our guys are fast. Like Cole's really, really fast. Isaiah's really fast. Those young guys, those are the youngest, the youngest TJ. But those guys are really fast. So it's been good. So I think that being able to pick stuff up, being able to be able to perform like Jason did at a high level without getting all the one reps. Even though, but I will tell you, last time, same thing. The way we practice helps. When you're going to huddle, your twos get as many, especially your twos are getting as many reps as you want conceptually. So you're getting a lot more reps than you want. I think our twos, our backups, I can't say backups, but our guys are two to three, get a lot more reps than most people's two to three. I think it's helped us all. It's been awesome ever since I've been with Coach at Whitewater. Amazing amount of reps those kids get. Has that been a, a competition between Cole and Isaiah? Uh, it's, it's, a that that? it's always a competition, man. You know that, but it, it has been. I, mean, I think, and you know the background with Isaiah, uh, his athleticism, you guys saw him in the springtime, the ability to make plays. And coming from a, a winning program, when you say championship helps, the understanding of what it takes to be successful. I think we sometimes undervalue the fact, especially the quarterback position, of how important it is of coming from a winning program or being a winner or winning a lot, understanding what it takes to win. But I think it has been, it's been a really good competition. I think you would never look, I saw the unique, the room is so, I got the, the best room in the country. I mean, they are great guys and young men. We have a blast, but like, so I never, it is competition, but they root and pull for each other. Even when Jason when Jay was here too, it's kind of not like, Oh, I hope that kid doesn't do well so I can get the play. Like they just, they pull for each other. And they're as excited when someone else makes a play as they are when they make their own play. So yes, there's competition going, but it never feels like it is. But it has to be, because you know and I know, I've told you with Jason, and going to that competition makes the next guy better. I really believe, I think when it happened back in Buffalo, Duran, J, Tyree Jackson got hurt, Duran Anderson came in, played great. He gets hurt, Tyree comes back and plays great. Like you see like, ooh, my job. Cause you know how all the stories we hear of like Kurt Warner's and someone goes down or a Tom Brady world or whatever happens, you gotta be ready. So I think that's got this good competition that's healthy. What areas of focus do you have for Cole during fall camp this year? Um, I, I, I call it, I'm not a I'm biomechanical guy by any means, but I, I'm a loose hip guy, like ability to twist and turn. So more stay loose. I'm a, you guys have heard me say stay loose and be sudden, but stay loose and be able to make those off platform throws, those flick throws, because he's such a tough guy. He, you know, what he ran in like Texas Tech and just wants to go pound people, like being able to be able to lose and be able to make those throws. Because he was, not to, like, don't quote me on this one if I'm wrong, I think he was a low 90 baseball player, pitcher. Like he threw hard. So being able to not throw hard and be able to make those flick throws and those different types of throws is something that's really big. We worked on really hard and him be able to throw off platform naked, play action, that kind of stuff, be able to uh, escape the pocket and throw it out to run everybody over. It's okay to run some people over, just not everybody all the time. Coach, um, uh, how much uh, with, with, with the Kansas offense in particular and, 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 and football in general, how much is having uh, a two experienced quality backs like you have here, running backs, potentially back to quarterback play? Um, it makes it much easier, 100%. It makes it easier. The play action becomes better. Um, they can't just lock in on you as a quarterback and come get something. No, they better take care of the running back too. And then the play action game is awesome and the move the pocket type stuff is great. But I think it's a huge benefit. And it also takes pressure off that we can run the ball, have the ability to run the ball with those guys. 
not always have to make the the, uh, the toughest throw in the toughest situation. No, sometimes you just go, boom, Devin, hey, Daniel, and go get some. And then all of a sudden, when you don't do it, the action becomes one on one. Now, with the kids you have outside, now you bring people in the box, and now you got to go Lawrence and Q and Luke and those guys and play them one on one. That's that's a that's that's tough. So I think it's been huge. It's been awesome for those guys. It helps. And the other thing about those guys, um, everybody talks about them as runners. Unbelievable and pass pro and like the ability to do that and and take pride in it. I think that's what helps us. So, but it's, it's been a big big plus for us. How different or maybe not different has your role been with the double offensive coordinator or what that changed for you on day to um, day? Role, I think it's been more. I say this. Um, I think I always feel like I'm still heavily involved in the pass game. I got a little bit of Angie. Um, I think it's probably a little more say so in it because um, Jeff being a little bit being new, not new to the Kansas offense, but still having the background of what we do. So I think I've had been more. Uh, he's leaning a lot more on is he pass game wise or here, yeah. But you go take that and tell me what it is and play, uh, he's really good flash stuff obviously from his background. But being able to let me kind of roll in the quick game and the drop back game, I think has been um, probably the bigger difference. Kind of keeping what we do, and be, but being able to add stuff throughout the spring and the summer has been great. So I think it's been more, he's leaning more because he knows I'm the one who, uh, and our staff probably, I'm the one who's been around the office. Like Andy and I were together back in Buffalo, kind of created this thing, kind of rolled. That keeps it growing. And then I always tell you this, when some, some people come in, the greatest part about new people coming in is they always add value to it. You take what we've done and what Andy done and us together, and then you always add some value to it. So that's what's kind of cool about it. I never look at it as, oh my God, someone, well, hey, someone's coming in really good. So I think it's been, but it's been more pass game, kind of as you go ahead, go get, go roll with this thing and, and then let's go. We're going to get to talk to Ben Easters in a minute here. I'm just wondering, what kind of off field value does he provide you guys in the quarterback? Um, as much, I'm trying to think of, I'm going to say this, I apologize for any other quarterback I've coached in a lot of years. One of, if not the best guys court in the quarterback room I've had. Um, a dude not playing as much as he probably would like to, obviously we all want to play, but still having so much value in regards to um, being there. He knows the offense, he's been there for multiple years now, has been through this offense with us, can help the young guys, knows all, yeah, how, well, how we do things, and can help them be positive and understand how I want them coached, and be able to focus and refocus on the different things I've talked about. And he can talk to those guys. And I was always having that positive guy coming off the field when we're on when we're playing. I think it's been huge for Jalen Ember. I think Jason loved him more. Like just someone to kind of hey, it's okay, Jay. Like me saying hey, whatever, and then all of a sudden him being around. The value is huge having him around. He's awesome. How important was it symbolically just to give him the chance to play at Cincinnati? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. We gave him a run play too, and of course he lowered his head. Freaking, I don't know if it's an Indiana team or whatever, but he ran and tried to lower some boom. But he was he is he is he cares. And like like Lance says, in terms of value and to him, the value one of the biggest values he brings is he's so bought into what we're doing here. Uh, from a term of culture, um, that's been great, and you love to have him. Uh, he's a terrific person. What's the uh, next step for Jalen Daniels? You know, I, I, obviously anybody's mentioned the health, but as a quarterback, what's kind of the next step for him? Uh, staying healthy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, Still building on the fact of, I will tell you this from Jumpy knows this too. Well, first off, getting back to getting 11 on 11 type reps. So that's fun, but just getting back into the mix. It's a different piece when you haven't been, and people haven't been around you. You know what I'm saying, coming to try to blow you up, for lack of better words. Um, but to me, it's still a fact of finding that line of what I can and can't do in terms of special. And having that line of reach out, you guys heard me say, you got to push that line of greatness, but once you go over it, you become really bad, like a really crazy, stupid throw or super. But figure out what he, what I can get away with and make, because when he does, and you've seen it before, and we've all seen, it, there's some specialness going on. I know it's not a word as great as specialness, but there's some special things he can do. But I think he's still trying to find that thing, and then getting back to taking what they give you, and it's okay not always have to. It's okay to get the ball depth, throw the swing, throw a check down, get a short throw and not have to always make the spectacular. I think when he combines that, it's going, and then you guys know this about him and you've talked about it for multiple years. His background in high school is very run oriented quarterback wise. Like Randon, he'll, he'll tell you that, didn't he? Like he, his office like Z post. 
Or you go to the Zippo's with an open, run, okay? So think about that and learn if some of these kids now are coming in that are in these high octane type offenses, um, multiple personnel group in the four or five wide and all this stuff. So it's still growing in the football, the football knowledge part of it, understanding coverages, he's good with protection, but still understanding that part of it's big. Yeah, how do you balance that with Isaiah being such a great athlete, you know, can do things outside of the pocket off platform with also saying, hey, learn what you're doing in the in the pocket. Um, I, I think a little bit of uh, what's good about that is, I guess to answer is like, I can, you can see what he can do outside. So I can spend all my time with him actually working inside, if that makes sense. And that's where him and Jalen are kind of similar where Jalen is good outside, now let's get him inside. So being able to make the throws that are there in time, just like Coach and I were talking, Coach Rodman was talking like, we got to be able to make the throws we need to make in the pocket on time. Um, and I can spend all the time doing it. So that's where all the routes on air with the receivers. Um, that's where you get your stationary, for lack of better words, the perfect pocket, nice, pretty, easy throws. They say easy, but a clean pocket type throws. So we spend a lot more time after watching those guys throw off platform and, and what we, they do. And then I think a lot of my teaching has become really good with off platform stuff. So I feel really like I do as good as anybody in the country of being able to help kids be able to do that off country, off platform type stuff to get them on platform again <laughs> and realize I got to go back to that sometimes. So that's where the balancing act becomes a lot of my indie time now has become quick movement, reset, and make throws when you're actually on platform. Lance talked about him being really even keeled in high school. He yeah. had a, a lot of comeback yes. wins and, and yeah. things like that. I guess, how did you see that attitude play out on the field, both when you were recruiting him and, and now? Um, I'll, I'll talk more now. I saw him recruiting, I saw him recruiting when I, was, I got a chance to watch one game live. Um, just never, like, it was like this. And in that game, they were playing a team that they were better than, and he ran for uh, multiple yard touchdowns. I think they threw for multiple touchdowns, but still, it's just he's not he's a maybe like this kind of guy, but he's not a like that like he's opposite of Jalen in that little way, you know what I'm saying? Not a bad way, just kinda like he is like this. But then he plays and he just he has I call it the Allen Iverson crossover move where he can fake people out with the and he can cut people and go, but he's dynamic athletically. I'm special, but he's so much this, which is pretty cool. So I've seen it now, I've seen it. Um I sometimes raise my voice at practice occasionally. Um and sometimes you kinda see how kids react to it. Sometimes, in the last time going on, sometimes I do it just to kind of create chaos to see how they handle it because it's going to happen in a game. So sometimes I'll go nuts so to kind of see how they react to it. And he's just like, yes, coach. I'm like, wow, that's kind of boring. <laughs> it's too easy. But it was really good. But it, but he was, that's what I'm really impressed by. He's been so – family's awesome. The coach he had in high school, those guys are awesome. But he is so much – yes, coach. That's all he looks at. He looks right at him. I can be like, protection – Yes, coach. I'm like, okay. And that's what's so much fun. It's like you pick stuff up, so it's pretty impressive. It really is. It doesn't, it is like that. There's a new rule with the mics in the, in the back of the helmets mm -hmm. where the quarterbacks can, can hear. How do you talk to the quarterbacks about that? And how, do you, well, how have you seen them manage that? I know Jeff is probably one. Yeah, but it, it's in. cool. They, um, it's still, at this moment, it's more, it's um, just the play call type stuff with us being more of a wristband type team, obviously. Um, it's just a wristband number, but it's little tidbits of information can help. I mean, that's what's a good part, and I've talked to Jeff about it. Like going to the bowl game with Jason, you know, the bowl game was three touchdowns, three picks, three touchdowns. It was like a roller coaster. It's like, I'm like Ohio, so I'm a Cedar Point guy, the best roller coasters around, but I'm like, oh, the macro. So I got Jason, third and 12, it's okay to punt occasionally have fourth down, you don't have to throw the ball in the triple, it's okay. But trying to call him down was fun to be able to, and even out there, like even after a play, you could say like, "Hey, deep breath, man. It's okay. We got this." You know, so that's kind of have the positive reference. So I've talked to Jeff a little bit about that, the, the part of that a little bit, and he's good, but he's great at that kind of stuff. But also the part of there's something within the play call, you can give some tips and reminders in the play call, which is pretty cool. Hey, this is double. Hey, we got multiple movements here, or hey, this could be. Hey, remember why you did this now. You know, expecting this to bust open or so on and so forth. But like, hey, here's a, it's a check with me. Remember, it's an A-gap check or whatever check it is. So I think that the little tips or reminders you can give them, I think is really cool. It's, it's helpful to be able to, all that stuff we talk about as coaches, you can continually still talk about it. So again, the good thing is with him talking about it, he's great with them. He's got, he's got, Jeff's got, you guys obviously have met him multiple times, a really even keel kind of 
comfortable demeanor too. It's like, you know, I really appreciate that you have taken that. Anything else to proceed?